Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. Check it out, new car behind me. This is actually a 94 Toyota 4Runner and it's got some EGR problems. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to diagnose the EGR system on this vehicle. Let's get started. So check it out, finally I have a dry erase board, something I've been lacking on this channel. Uh, I figured this was necessary because I just wanted to explain the EGR system on this vehicle because it's, it's uh, a little unusual, it's a little uncommon. Um, so what is an EGR system? Well, it's exhaust gas recirculation. When the engine's under full load, some of the exhaust gases get recycled into the combustion chamber, and that reduces the temperature in the combustion chamber, which reduces nitrous oxide emissions. And that's what this is all about, reducing emissions. So you have the EGR valve right here, and it will open under full throttle and allow exhaust gases to, pat to recirculate into the intake manifold and it'll close under idle conditions and stop that from happening. Um, if your EGR valve is stuck closed, it won't allow any gases to recirculate and that'll cause a malfunctioning EGR system. The way that an EGR can get stuck closed is that carbon can build up on the little pintle valve right here or it can build up on the uh, input side where it goes back to the intake manifold. And if there's carbon buildup at either of those sides, that'll restrict flow and that could cause a P401 EGR insufficient flow. So that's definitely the number one thing to check if you get a P401. You want to check to make sure that your EGR valve is not restricted. That's not the problem on this car. On this car, we have bad emissions. We have high nitrous oxide emissions, and that makes me suspect that the EGR system is just not working at all. Now, some EGR systems are electronically activated. This system is vacuum controlled. Uh, this is the vacuum input line. When there's vacuum present, it actually pulls up on this diaphragm, which opens up the pintle valve, which lets um, exhaust gases circulate. So the, the vacuum input valve actually goes over here to what's either called a TVV valve or a VSV valve. If it's electronically controlled, it's a VSV valve. Uh, if it's TVV, that's temperature vacuum valve. And that, the TVV valve is actually controlled by temperature. It's actually screwed into um, a coolant passage. So whether you have a TVV or a VSV, they all work the same. When they're closed or when they're cold, this port right here is actually gonna be closed off and any vacuum is gonna be redirected out through this filter right here to the atmosphere. So uh, when they're energized or when they're warmed up, this port is actually gonna open right here. This port is gonna open and it's gonna connect these two, the, the two ends together. And so that's, that's basically a way of preventing the EGR system from working when the vehicle is cold. So that, that leads us over to the vacuum modulator. The vacuum modulator is actually back pressure modulated. It's, it's also got a hookup from the, um, from the exhaust gases and the, the exhaust gases are pushing on the bottom of a diaphragm right here. They're pushing it up. There's a little spring pressing it down under normal conditions. So when the exhaust pressure goes up, what actually happens is it moves up a little valve and you can see there's a little hole right there. That, that hole will connect ports P and Q and allow vacuum or air to pass between them. You can also see that there's a third port, which is R. That third port is, all, is connected to uh, manifold vacuum and when you go under full open throttle, that port also, that vacuum helps to pull the diaphragm up as well. So this is both pushed up by, um, by back pressure and it's pulled up by vacuum manifold pressure. So that's the EGR system in a nutshell. So right now we're gonna go under the hood, take a look at the components, do some diagnostics and figure out what the problem is. So yeah, this is what it looks like under the hood, all these vacuum lines and such. This is just one of those old 90s cars that you know just still used vacuum lines. My, uh, the, my mother's Nissan Altima is like this too. I really dislike these cars. They're, they're confusing to work on and it takes a little while to just sort of learn the vacuum lines and learn what goes where. You know, when you first take a look at this, it just looks like, ah, oh, what is all that, you know? But, uh, you know, if you just take some time to study it and, and take a look at it, you'll, you'll figure out what you're looking at eventually. Underneath the hood, there is a vacuum hose routing diagram, which you can study. Um, I know it says Cal here, which, might lead you to believe that this is the California emissions vehicle, 
I can tell you right now that this definitely is not the California emissions vehicle because I have the factory service manual and the California emissions vehicle is not supposed to have a TVV valve as part of the EGR system. Um, it's supposed to have a VSV, a vacuum switching valve. That's what it stood for. Um, and this car doesn't. This car has a TVV. It has a temperature vacuum valve. So I don't know what happened there. Maybe they put the wrong sticker on or something, but I found that this routing does basically correspond to what's on the vehicle. So at least I can trust that and I, can I was able to use this to uh, figure out which lines go where. All right, let me point out the locations of some components. Back here is the EGR valve, okay? This line right here is the vacuum line that activates the EGR valve. This is the vacuum modulator. You can see it's got, uh, this is port Q in the back and they're, they're numbered or they're, let, they're labeled on top. This is port Q and it goes straight through to port P and over here is port R. So you got these two vacuum lines coming and running down. All of these vacuum lines here are running down into metal lines that are, are permanent and they're running down along the side of the, uh, the valve cover here. And so a lot of them come up here and, but some of them terminate down below and that is it down here is the location of the TVV valve. I'm going to sh try to show you here. Okay. So I had to take the intake snorkel off in order to show you that that's it right there. See, there's two vacuum lines running to it and it's actually screwed into the block right there. So this up here, this is the filter and these are the two vacuum lines. All right, we'll pull those off and you can see just got two ports. Okay. So that's the TVV valve. I'm actually going to leave this valve or I'm going to leave the intake uh, disconnected so that we can do some uh, tests on this valve. Okay, so let's, what we definitely have to do is figure out a way to test the TVV valve, right? But it's obviously going to be a little inconvenient to pull these lines off and put some extension lines on and blow through the valve depending on when the car is hot or when it's cold because, you know, I got to put this intake tube back on. So I think what I'll do is I'll follow these lines back and figure out what's on the other side. So those lines, they run down here and they come underneath the, uh, the upper radiator hose and they actually run into those little metal tubes I mentioned before. And they run all the way to the back of the engine right here and they terminate in this line and this line. Remember, the TVV or the VSV valve is in between the EGR valve and the vacuum modulator. So basically that it's in between these two lines. It'll either connect these lines together or cut them off depending on if the car is cold. So if I wanna go ahead and test the TVV, all I have to do is pull the Q line off the back of the vacuum modulator and pull the input line off the back of the EGR. And I can just, you know, connect between these two. I can connect my vacuum pump up and test that and make sure that uh, the valve's open or closed. So uh, an important tool to have in order to help diagnose the system would be a vacuum pump with a gauge. This can double as just using the vacuum gauge by itself. If you want to hook this up while the engine's running, you'll be able to tell if you have vacuum on a certain port. This, uh, this comes with all different kinds of adapters. You should definitely make sure it has a T fitting because we're going to T it in with the vacuum, uh, the, the line going to the vacuum, to the EGR valve to make sure that it's working during our testing procedure. But anyway, good thing to have. Okay, since this engine does have a TVV valve, um, that valve is, is going to be in a different state once I warm the engine up. It's going to be open once I warm the engine up, but it's closed now. And I want to verify that it is closed. So I'm going to pull off those two lines that it, you know, that it runs to because it goes in between the EGR and the vacuum modulator. So I'll pull those two lines off. Just connect my vacuum pump to uh, the Q line and put my finger over the other line. Actually, I don't need to put my finger over it. It wouldn't really matter. But if it's closed off, well, actually, yeah. I'll put my finger over the, uh, the other line, and if it's open, I would get vacuum. But if it's closed, the vacuum's gonna bleed off through the, uh, the air filter. And you can see that it's bleeding off. So that confirms that the valve is closed. Well, so far, so good. It's working. I'm gonna reconnect this here. Okay. So I've gone ahead and uh, warmed the car up a little bit. So let's confirm that the TVV valve is now open. I'm going to do the same test. Plug the uh, vacuum valve, the vacuum pump in, and now I'm going to pump it up. And as you can see, it's holding vacuum. Well, mostly. It bleeds off a little, but 
that's definitely different from before when it wasn't holding vacuum at all. Now when I hold my finger on it, or my thumb on it, it's holding vacuum. So that confirms that the TVV valve is working, so we can rule that out. Um, if you have a, a, a vacuum switching valve on your setup, I'm going to show you at the end of the video how to confirm how one of those is working, because we've got one right here. We've got a couple of them right here, and so I'll take it off and uh, show you how to test that. But for right now, we can take the, the TVV out of the equation, and uh, we can continue to test the vacuum modulator and the EGR valve. I think next, why don't we go ahead and confirm that the EGR, you know, let's see if the EGR valve is working at all. I mean, I suspect it's not working, but one way to actually confirm that it's working would be to hook up our uh, vacuum gauge in line. So I've got my T fitting and I got a, a couple extra inches of vacuum tube. So I'm just gonna pull the line off of the, the vacuum valve, hook that to the T fitting, hook back to the uh, EGR valve here. So now I've got my, uh, my line coming off and I got that hooked up to my gauge. So now when I turn the car on and I rev the engine down here, I should see that needle go up and down if, uh, if the EGR system is working. So let's test that. Okay, let's rev the engine. Nothing. So that confirms that the EGR system is not working. So I think next, let's go ahead and make sure that the, the EGR valve itself is working. So to do that, I'm gonna pull this off and I'm just gonna connect the vacuum pump directly to the EGR valve. And if I pump this up and the, the engine dies, that confirms that the EGR valve is functional. And there we go, engine dies. So that, that confirms that the EGR, the pintle valve is being pulled up by the, the, um, the diaphragm. The EGR valve is opening. So there's nothing wrong with this EGR valve. It's not clogged up with carbon. If the engine didn't die at that point, I would suspect that the EGR valve is stuck shut and I would pull it out, clean off all the carbon, put it back on, that would probably fix the problem. The opposite could happen, the EGR valve could actually get stuck open, in which case you would have a no start condition. So if you're trying to diagnose a no start condition and you have an EGR system, that's definitely one, one place you should look, make sure it's not stuck open. So we've traced the problem back to the vacuum modulator. Now, if I try to apply vacuum to the Q port while the uh, while the engine's off or while the engine's idle. Basically when there's no back pressure, what's gonna happen is no vacuum's gonna build up. It's actually going to exhaust out of the top. There's actually a, there's a little exhaust hole and a filter on the top. So that's what happens when there's no back pressure. Remember, we need back pressure to actually push the diaphragm up and connect ports P and Q, right? So we need to turn the car on. And what happens is we, um, the back pressure only builds up when you rev the engine. So when we build up that back pressure, we should see this needle go up. We should see the, the vacuum being allowed through the P and Q, the P port to the Q port, and we should see this needle spike. Okay, let's go ahead and rev this. We should see that needle spike. No, it didn't spike. So there are two possible causes for this. Number one, the diaphragm can be blown inside the vacuum modulator, in which case no, no amount of back pressure would cause the, the, the modulator to activate and connect ports P and Q. So that's possibility number one. Possibility number two, there could be no vacuum on port P to begin with. Well, the easiest to test for obviously is vacuum because we should have vacuum. We should be able to test that right now. I have to switch hoses here. So I'm gonna stick this in here. Okay, I've got the vacuum gauge hooked up to port to the P line. I'm gonna rev the engine. No vacuum. Let's check R. Okay, we got vacuum on R, but there's no vacuum on P. So why is that? Well, this is the part where I come clean with you and I tell you that I intentionally sabotage this. Uh, I've unplugged port uh, 
basically I've, I've unplugged the p-line from the throttle body here the reason i've done this is because yesterday when this car first came to me this line was actually plugged up and it took me a little while to realize this but i eventually did and i blew it out with some compressed air then cleaned it out with some solvent and you know now it's working so now that i've reconnected it let's go ahead and test line p again and you can see that we now have vacuum on that line so always a good idea to check your throttle body valve, um, ports make sure that they are clean and clear and producing vacuum so now we'll hook the p-line back up unhook q again put the gauge back on now that we've fixed the problem we should see some vacuum on this port and we have vacuum now so there we go that was the problem that is the fix that is every step in diagnosing the entire egr system let's go ahead and confirm and make sure that vacuum gets to the egr port okay so i've gone ahead and teed into the vacuum line that runs directly to the egr valve now let's go ahead and give it a rev And you can see that there is vacuum reaching the EGR valve and that confirms that the whole system is now working. So yay, fix. Okay, I did promise to show you how to test a vacuum switching valve. Um, I've just got the valve, uh, I've got two jumper wires connected to it and here's my vacuum gauge right here, okay? So right now the vacuum valve, uh, the vacuum switching valve is shut and if we apply vacuum to this port, it's gonna stay there because the valve is shut, okay? But if I jumper it, turn the valve on, now the valve is open and you can hear it, right? If I put my finger there, now it's actually holding vacuum. So now it's connected those two, uh, those two lines together. That's how you test a vacuum switching valve. So there you go. That's how you test the actual EGR valve, the vacuum modulator, and the vacuum switching valve or temperature vacuum valve. Hope this helped you out, guys. Thanks for watching.